All right, welcome. Today I'm here with Soft Simon from Mempool Space. Um, Simon is based in Dubai. He's a Bitcoiner in Dubai. So I invited him on the show to talk about what it's like to live on crypto in Dubai. Simon, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. Awesome. So what time is it there? I know here it's 9 a.m. pretty much. It's uh, 6 p.m. Okay, cool. Um, so Simon, what is it like uh, living in Dubai, first of all? I, th I think it's amazing here. Actually, because uh, I've been living nomadically for the past four years, actually. Um, and eventually I settled down here for the time being. So given all things considered, it's pretty good here. And how long have, have you been in Dubai since you got there? It's uh, most of the past, past year. Um, what's the Bitcoin scene like there? Uh, I've heard that like there's a whole bunch of Bitcoin companies that are um, setting up offices in Dubai and stuff like that. Is, is there a pretty good Bitcoin scene there? Um, well, first you have to uh, split up the crypto scene and a Bitcoin scene. I think the the crypto scene is huge here, and I think it's all the money that comes here. So there's tons of conferences all the time. There were lots of blockchain conference, crypto conferences, NFT conferences and stuff like that. And then the, the Bitcoin part of it is usually a bit more niche. So we do, we do have monthly, there's a monthly Bitcoin meetup, uh, which is quite good. And uh, there are a few Bitcoiners here. So I think that the regulatory and uh, situation here makes it attractive for Bitcoin companies and also people with Bitcoin wealth or crypto wealth to come here. Does your average person in Dubai know about crypto or is it pretty much just like in the investor class um, people that have interest in crypto? Well, that's that's hard to say. I think a lot of people know about it nowadays here. Uh, most people in Dubai that come here, you should, because you know, 95% of the people in Dubai are just expatriates and I, my general perception is that most people know uh, know about it at least. I I hear people randomly talking about it sometimes when I'm walking outside. But how do people uh, primarily trade Bitcoin? Is it happening like on Binance or some other like regulated exchange, or are they doing it through like uh, peer to peer Telegram groups and, and things of that nature? Well, uh, Dubai and the UAE is very cash based society, which makes it very friendly for OTC markets. So the OTC market here is huge. You can very easily find OTC dealers if you want to exchange to and from Bitcoin and Tether. Tether is used a lot here. And uh, so the currency exchange rate is quite low here. You can you can exchange Bitcoin for like as low as 1% or less when you, when you do larger amounts. So, and then you can, if you sell Bitcoin here, for example, then you can use the cash to buy whatever. You can buy an apartment even for a bag of cash here. So it's extremely healthy from a, uh, P2P O2C market here. And uh, Binance is Binance P2P is used uh, in very extensively as well, which means which mean you can just instantly sell on Binance or buy on Binance and get it directly to and from your bank accounts through the O2C network. And uh, this is something <laughs> comparing to uh, all other places I've been is that it's the most free and healthy financial free uh, place I've seen for this kind of market, because usually there are too many, usually there are a lot of KYC AML uh, laws that regulate this. And also most countries in the world have capital gains, which means you have to like log and report what you sell, what you buy. But here in Dubai, there are no capital gains. There is no income tax, which means when you buy and sell, there's it's all it's all legal because this is there's never any any tax situation and the limits for what you can transfer in and out of bank accounts here is uh, very high and the bank don't ask so many questions and you can even there are even cash deposit machines for for the atms here so you could you could just come here you can sell bitcoin for cash or bag of cash, and you can just deposit it straight to your bank account and then start spending so it's extremely financial free, which, uh, and it makes, if you, if you have your, uh, 
majority of your savings in, in Bitcoin, for example. It makes it very easy to live here because you can easily convert it into the, the fiat off ramps here and get it into the system. What about people like directly accepting Bitcoin? I've heard um, that it might be possible to like buy exotic cars or like apartments and stuff with Bitcoin in Dubai. Is that true in your experience? Yeah, that's true. And the companies even advertise it. I see regularly, I see uh, mostly it's car dealers and uh, property agents. So property companies, they even when I was walking with my friends in, in Dubai mall and I was st just stopped by a, one of these uh, property agents and they told me straight, just randomly, just, so you know, you can, you can buy with Bitcoin to, to invest in property. And we were like, what well, shocked, like, wow, we didn't even ask for it. And, and they tell, and they tell us, so it that's very common here now. So, and I think it's partly because this, this past few years, there's a lot of new crypto wealth. So the money's flowing here. So the market adapts to that. So yeah, so they even advertise it on uh, the property management websites. I've seen, we accept Bitcoin, the car dealers here, especially the, maybe the luxurious car, they accept Bitcoin or crypto uh, immediately. And also there are visa agents that helps with your setup, company setup and visa. They also take Bitcoin directly or any or other cryptocurrencies. Um, so. That's very good, I'd say. Uh, even though most of them, I, I think they, they might use like a third party company that just sells it for fiat immediately. They don't really care about actually wanting Bitcoin or crypto. They just want it to, as a way for customers to, <laughs> I mean, just to attract customers or getting more customers. So, uh, so they might, so they might like, send you to like a third party gateway and you have to pay maybe a few percent extra markup and then you can buy the thing. So that's okay. usually how it works here. And what about like retail? Like if, if you go to like a, a shop or like a store or, or something like that, like do, do they typically accept Bitcoin or any other kind of? No, crypto? I don't think so. I, during the time I, was, I spent here, I haven't seen any place that accept it like that. So uh, I think there might be a few places. I, I, I looked on the, you know, the the coin map or something like that. There's a website that shows, and I've seen some places that had done it in the past, and maybe some that still do it. But I think it's not that common. Yeah, it probably doesn't make sense. And I, I mean, being in in this, this space for, for several years, I I also don't think it really makes sense for regular shops and restaurants that don't really care about Bitcoin or crypto. They need to pay their bills in. In the local currency, so um, so I don't expect I don't expect to see that kind of adoption here. So it's more about finding the uh, the off ramps, so the fiat gateways, right now. Have you ever run across like a Bitcoin ATM, like in the mall or something? Is is Mempool space based in Dubai? Are you guys like a Dubai company? No, it's a it's a Japanese company actually. So it's just me personally. It's based here, right? Oh, okay, okay. As far as uh, the the crypto scene in Dubai. You said there's lots of conferences, but they're mostly like altcoin and NFT based. Um, yeah. have, has there ever been like a Bitcoin focused event that that's taken place in Dubai? Um, yeah, we had one recently. Uh, we had the Tone Vase came here and had the Understanding Bitcoin conference, which I also attended as a speaker at. So it was back in the November, um, and it was like a small part of a bigger experience exchange, uh, bigger um event that was called nft summit or something so we we used like a part of that same hotel and we had an understanding bitcoin uh, conference just next next door and the size difference is it was really huge so the nft conference was huge and then this tiny understanding bitcoin conference just next by so that was uh, really good not that many people maybe 50 to 100 people or something like that but uh yeah that was uh uh, one Bitcoin conference I know. I don't. I don't know of any bigger pure Bitcoin conferences that have been in the past few years. It's usually the the blockchains or the cryptos. Yesterday I spoke to Jeff Gallus from Fulmo.org. Mm -hmm. uh, they're throwing like a Lightning Hack Day event later this month. Um, is there like a community of like developers or like people building um, on top of Bitcoin in Dubai? I don't know about. 
we don't really have a community. We, we have more like private. We, when we go to the Bitcoin meetups, we, the Bitcoiners find each other. So, so we, we, we make connections. So I know a bunch of people here who are Bitcoiners who are doing building stuff, building wallets, building services, DeFi on Bitcoin, stuff like this. So so there's a lot of uh, people like that's that's coming here and uh, or moving and setting up a company here. So, so that's pretty cool. And uh, I think... Yeah, there's more and more coming, and we want we want to. We are talking about uh, setting up like a proper, building a proper community here, a proper meetup here. So we have one, like a Bitcoin community here that we're starting that we call Dubai Citadel. So there's there's a Telegram group, there's a Twitter account where we post news about Bitcoin related to Dubai. So we are working on a Bitcoin focused community here. What about mining? Is electricity cheap enough for there to be a mining industry there? Or is it kind of too expensive to be profitable? I don't think it's uh, profitable to mine here. Um, I, I heard uh, some people I met here that do mining here because they were able to get some subsidies. But in general, I don't think so. There are a lot of miners here, uh, mining companies and people that do mine, but they usually... Uh, placed miners maybe in, in Siberia or something while they have the bis- just the business set up here. Um, have you heard of anyone like using Bitcoin mining in the petroleum industry? I know like it's a huge industry there, like to capture waste energy or whatever. No, not that I heard of. As far as uh, the, um, the Bitcoin group that you're in, the Dubai Telegram group, um, yeah. Like what you said, there's people building wallets and stuff. Like what, what projects like may we have heard of? Uh, I met a few people from uh, the company called uh, Vulpen Ventures that are building the building DeFi and Bitcoin. So they're building the Marina wallet and the TDEX platform that you can swap between Bitcoin and stablecoin uh, trustlessly uh, on on Liquid. So those those people are here right now or moving here in transition to move here. What's your opinion on on liquid as a side chain and like side chains in general? Do you, do you see them as as like a good addition to the Bitcoin ecosystem? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we we are actually working more now on on supporting liquid on the mempool space a website, but we're using a separate domain called liquid.network. So that's where our liquid stuff is. So so yeah, I'm quite bullish on on liquid in general. It's like a way of offloading um yeah offloading the take load out of the bitcoin network that uh, and make the transactions faster cheaper and more anonymous which are on liquid it's like a way of scaling so it's more so it's just about trade-offs like you 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 lose maybe some of the base layer security and you you're using this trusted liquid federation but on the other hand you gain more uh other benefits like like i just mentioned like anonymity and and speed and then it can be settled back to the main chain after. So, yeah, I like the notion that we can move more stuff to side chains or side networks of Bitcoin, so we don't need a we don't have the need for altcoins. We could um, we could swap, for example, you could on on Liquid you can swap between Bitcoin and and uh, Tether, for example. So you don't need Ethereum. And on um, using Lightning, you can make cheap, fast transactions, so you don't need Litecoin and you can on liquid everything is blind the, the the values are blinded by default so you don't see what asset and what amount you're sending so basically you don't need Monero if you're using liquid so so that's one aspect I like a lot about it and uh, yeah so there's tons of uh, nft stuff moving to to liquid recently um I know blockstream is going to issue the the they have their mining note, and also they're going to issue the the volcano bond, the El Salvador bond on on liquid assets as well. So that maybe will give uh, some more traction to liquid. I actually just interviewed an artist and sci-fi writer, this guy George Saludis, and um, he he actually uh, makes NFTs on Rare Toshi, which I believe is on liquid. Yeah, yeah, I'll try that one. And uh, yeah, you have to use liquid. Yeah, yeah. So. He was he was talking about it and how he prefers Rare Toshi to OpenSea. So, as far as like Lightning Network goes, is, is would you say that there's like 
lightning projects also in Dubai? No, I don't think so. I mean, there are probably some startups I don't know about, but not, not, none that I can think of right now. Okay. When, when but, if you were like to sell um, Bitcoin or whatever for cash in, in Dubai, um, yeah. do any of those like uh, merchants uh, use Lightning or is it mostly just on chain? If I'm going to sell Bitcoin, you mean? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. If you wanted to convert it to the local currency. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I haven't seen a single place where Lightning is adopted. It's only been on chain so far, for everything what I've seen. Yeah, so okay. that adoption really, yeah. Is there uh, anything else that I maybe haven't asked you that you'd like people to know about, as far as living on crypto in Dubai goes? Um, no, I just uh, I, I just wanted to take the opportunity to shield Dubai as an as a place where Bitcoiners can go because. Like I said, it's uh, the the the, free, the economic freedom here is is extremely high because there are no taxes. You can set up uh, a free zone. You can set up a company here quite cheaply and get a visa very easily. You can move here. There's no income tax. There's no capital gains tax, and it's easy to to live on Bitcoin here. So and there's a growing community of Bitcoiners moving here. So and also ever since. 2020 there ha hasn't been any like lockdowns or crazy stuff like that They're just smaller social distancing stuff so it's it's been relatively free to of movement as well you can fly in and out from all over the world so it's a good i'd say it's a good place to to go it's and it's been a good place this past few years while the rest of the world has been a bit uh shaken by lockdowns and restrictions or stuff and that's super yeah. encouraging to hear um Dubai actually has like one of the largest airports in the world, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a great. Uh, yeah, and they own Dubai owns the Emirates airline as well. So if you if you if you're based here, you have direct flights to all over the world with the world's greatest airline. So it's it's a great base to have as well. Before I let you go, could you kind of explain what Mempool Space is? Yeah, sure. Right. But it's a open source uh, block explorer where you. Um, can explore the Bitcoin chain. So the main features is that you 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 look up transactions uh, that you have done, and if there's maybe they're stuck in the mempool, you you want to know the status. So you look up your transaction. You can follow your track your transaction in real time, and also before you're gonna make a transaction, you you go to mempool.space and you can check the current required fee levels. So you get a good fee estimation and a good sense of what is required right now. And uh, yeah, and on Liquid Network, it's is the version for for Liquid. So it's the same thing there. You can browse the network. You can look up the Liquid assets that exist right now. Yeah. How does that work for the confidential transactions on Liquid? Yeah, you can see that there are transactions going on, but uh, you can't see the values. What they're sending, what's being sent, and also, and also, I want to add that uh, since we are, we are actively working on to support, so that mempool space is always uh, you can always self-host it and run it yourself. So the most popular solution right now is Umbrel. Get umbrel.com. So you just get a Raspberry Pi, you run your own node, and then you can just one-click mempool the mempool app it, in just a few seconds, and you got your own mempool space instance running on your own node. So when you you do a transaction on on the Bitcoin mainnet, or uh, that when you look up transaction, you browse the network. You're doing it in a self-sovereign, uh, private way. So that's something I want to emphasize. Okay, that's I actually didn't even know that. That's awesome. I also wanted to add that Mempool Space, the website that is yeah. not connected to your own node, is probably my favorite block explorer. Oh, thank you. Well. Simon, thank you very much. I know it's the evening time for you on a weekend, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, I appreciate you answering my questions and giving our viewers a glimpse of what it's like to, to use Bitcoin in Dubai. Mm -hmm.